people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I am your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India rejoiced as Chandrayaan-3 conquered the moon's south pole. Vikram lander soft landing mid-history. Isro's genius shined as it achieved yet another milestone with modest means. And now, as India takes the lead in space, with Chandrayaan-3 success, the country's space journey stands as a guiding light, transforming dreams into reality and resonating across the world. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. Sir, ये छां अभूतपूर्व है. ये छां विकसित भारत के संघनाद का है. India erupted in joy as Chandrayaan 3's triumph unfurled. Vikram Lander's soft landing on the moon's uncharted South Pole was a moment etched in history. The ISRO command station held its breath, then exhaled cheers of victory. From South Africa's BRICS summit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually linked his presence to this celestial spectacle. India stood tall and interpret pioneer, the first nation to reach out and touch the untouched soil of the moon's southern extremity. In a world of extravagant space endeavors, ISRO, the magicians of innovation, has orchestrated the speed on a shoestring budget at a mere $75 million. They have proven that the magic of determination and intellect can always achieve more than just capital. The entire mission operations right from launch till landing happened flawlessly as per the timeline and we became the fourth country to land to demonstrate the soft landing onto the moon surface and we became the first country to go to the near to the south pole of the moon. Elon Musk, the luminary behind SpaceX and leaders and scientists from every corner of the globe lauded India's cosmic accomplishment. The success of Chandrayaan-3 was followed by ISRO's affirmation on the very next day all steps were perfectly working in line with expectations. The moon's unexplored southern pole holds the promise of new revelations. ISRO, India's space research organization, stated that investigating the moon's southern pole could reveal water and valuable scientific information. We are going closer to South Pole, which is 70 degree almost. So the South Pole has a speci special uh, advantage with respect to being less illuminated by the sun. And because of that, there is a potential to have more scientific content in terms of retention of water below the subsurface and also elemental composition and other activities, uh, which is an electrical activity on the surface of the moon to be more dominant there than what it is there at the equator. So science people who are scientists who are working on moon has really shown a lot of interest on the South Pole because ultimately human beings wants to go and create colonies on the moon and then travel beyond. So the best place is something that we are looking for. So South Pole has a potential to, to be that. In the cosmic race, India emerged as the frontrunner, its flag planted firmly among the stars. Chandrayaan 3's victory not only adorned the nation's achievements but also propelled it onto the global commercial stage. And now, ISRO is showing no signs of slowing down. Mission Aditya, the solar mission, stands poised for a September debut. 
crew modules and escape capability stands on the brink of demonstration too. The year 2025 can be the year India's maiden manned mission to space could become a reality. A journey that started with whispers has now become a resounding narrative of courage, resilience and boundless aspirations. And if the experts are to be quoted, the game has just begun. BRICS, a group of developing nations, has decided six new countries to join, aiming to increase its global impact and spark more interest. Comprising Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, BRICS has been mulling and expanding its reach for a long time. Only an appropriate framework was to be decided. The move is generating discussions among leaders about the speed and scale of growth, showcasing BRICS' evolving flexibility. At the summit held in Johannesburg, all member leaders also emphasized closer ties with African nations, particularly in food and fuel. BRICS, the group of developing nations, has shaken things up by inviting six new countries to join its ranks. This strategic move aims to elevate BRICS global impact and could trigger a surge of other countries wanting in. Currently consisting of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, BRICS is expanding its horizons. The recently held summit in Johannesburg was buzzing with discussions on this expansion. While all BRICS members publicly support the idea, there are differing opinions among leaders on the pace and scale of this growth. We have decided to invite the Argentine Republic, the Arab Republic of Egypt, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates to become full members of BRICS, the membership will take effect from the 1st of January 2024. Russian President Vladimir Putin, speaking at the BRICS summit, emphasized his country's commitment to deepening ties with African nations. Putin assured that Russia would stand as a steadfast partner, particularly in food and fuel supply. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi highlighted BRICS expansion as a potential model for rejuvenating other 20th century established global institutions that have lost their shine. Modi envisions this move as a way to amplify collective support through BRICS. Bharat ka ye mat raha hai ki naye sadasyon ke judne se BRICS ek sangathan ke rup mein majboot tatha हमारे सभी साझा प्रयासों को एक नया बल देने वाला होगा भारत के इन सभी देशों के साथ बहुत ही गहरे संबंध है बहुत ही ऐतिहासिक संबंध है ब्रिक्स की मदद से हमारे द्विपक्षीय सहयोग में नए आयाम अवश्य जुड़ेंगे जिन अन्य देशों ने भी ब्रिक्स से जुड़ने की अभिलाषा व्यक्त की है भारत उनको भी पार्टनर कंट्रीज के रूप में जुड़ने के लिए कंसेंसस बनाने में योगदान देगा द इंटरेस्ट इन जॉइनिंग ब्रिक्स इज ओवरवेलमिंग विद ओवर 40 कंट्रीज शोइंग एंथुसियाज्म एंड 22 सबमिटिंग फॉर्मल एप्लीकेशंस दिस सर्च अंडरस्कोर्स द ग्रोइंग इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द ब्लॉक this expansion not only solidifies the unity among developing nations, but also signifies their intent to reshape global dynamics through collective strength and shared aspirations. Some say the bloc's blueprint for growth is poised to set a new benchmark in international collaboration. According to experts, BRICS nation's influence is expected to expand. But instead of completely replacing the US-led global order, they are more likely to present gradual economic and diplomatic alternatives. They also believe in order to maintain effectiveness, BRICS will require to handle the diverse interests of its members 
as it is the only component that can pose a little challenge. Amidst widespread public outcry in Pakistan, protests have broken out due to the high surge in petrol and electricity prices. Demonstrators expressed their dissatisfaction following the government's recent decision to implement additional increases in fuel costs. These events shed light on the mounting economic hardships, sparking apprehension about the broader implications for the Pakistani citizens and their daily lives. Amidst a rising tide of discontent, Pakistan traders in the bustling city of Karachi took to the streets to protest the skyrocketing prices of petrol and electricity. Their collective voice carried anti-government sentiments echoing demands for an immediate reversal of these steep price hikes. Pakistan recently announced yet another increase in the price of petrol and high-speed diesel. This marked the second such hike in a mere month, jacking up the price of petrol by a staggering 19.95 Pakistani rupees per litre for the next scheduled review. Though these price adjustments aligned with fiscal objectives outlined in an IMF agreement, they contribute significantly to an already daunting inflation rate, further burdening ordinary citizens. जो बिजली की कीमत जहां पहुंच गई जिसके बाद पेट्रोल की यकदम कीमतों को जहां पहुंचा दिया गया उसने हमारे कारोबार खत्म कर दिए उसने हमारी घरेलू जिंदगी को दुश्वार कर दिया उसने आम आदमी की जिंदगी बर्बाद कर दी मुल्क के मैशियत कारोबार वो जमीन पे आ गया ऑल्दू पाकिस्तान हैज एन अप्रूव्ड 3 बिलियन यूएस डॉलर्स आईएमएफ लोन Many doubt its adequacy for the country's crisis due to fundamental economic problems. Experts say all it can provide is a temporary relief. Amidst the protests, Kateka Information Minister Murtaza Solangi conceded that the government's hands are tied due to commitments established in their pact with the International Monetary Fund. हमने कुछ वादे वईद किए हैं आईएमएफ के साथ कुछ कमिटमेंट्स की हैं उनमें यह भी शामिल है कि हम बहुत ज्यादा सब्सिडीज ना दें जो मुल्क की मैशत का हाल है जो हमारे गैर मुल्की जर मुबादला के जराए का जो हाल है उसमें यह मुमकिन नहीं है कि हमारा जैसा मुल्क महंगा तेल खरीदे और सस्ता बेचे न्यूली रिलीज डेटा फ्रॉम द पाकिस्तान ब्यूरो ऑफ स्टेटिस्टिक्स पोर्ट्रेज अ स्टार्क रियलिटी विद इन्फ्लेशन रेट लीपिंग बाय 3.46 परसेंट सर्जिंग टू एन अस्टोनिशिंग 28.3 परसेंट इन जुलाई अलोन These economic tribulations exist within the context of a broader crisis Pakistan confronts grappling with spiraling inflation and dwindling foreign exchange reserves. The gravity of the situation is amplified by the persistent instability in the country's political sphere further exacerbating the hardships faced by ordinary citizens. As Pakistan navigates through these tumultuous waters, the repercussions on its citizens remain a pressing concern. The road ahead appears fraught with challenges as the nation's political volatility intertwines intricately with its economic stability. Time now for Asia this week the stories from across the continent. Yamaha Motors policy is to preserve the environment and promote a comfortable social life. At Otaru Canal in Hokkaido, sightseeing boats were installed with Yamaha Motors EV engine to provide comfort and satisfaction to passengers. The electric vehicle engine is named Harmo. It has an electric motor with a smooth control system. 
Biodiesel engines and EV engines are only used on boats at Otaru Canal with an aim to protect the environment. And this policy is matched with Yamaha Motors EV engine technology. The smooth operation of Harmo boats makes the guest passengers satisfied and they witness the surroundings of the historical buildings. で、音がないってことはそれだけエネルギー効率がいいわけなんで、それとハルモシステムっていうのはあの、本当片手で船が真横にも動くし、え、いろんな移動ができる。皆さん、本当にこれで動いてるのっていう反響が多いですね。In 2016, Yamaha Motor began investigating and developing an EV boat operation system. Transforming of mobility is the most important policy of Yamaha Motor. Yamaha Motor's interests include drones, electric two-wheelers, bicycles, vehicle chairs and marine transportation on land and beneath the surface of the ocean. The core objective of Yamaha Motor is to create a serene and clean environment along the canal. Both the sky and the ground are the targets of its ambition. The Kachu dancing event was recently organized in Japan's Yokohama city. These adorable Pokemon Pikachus dance to draw crowds. This year, Pokemon World Championship was supported by Yokohama city. It includes Pokemon and Pikachu March, Pokemon Card Game, Pokemon Go and Pokemon Unite. Pikachu danced attractively while marching near the Yokohama Museum. Many families and their kids were excited to meet with real Pikachu. During the event, a Pokemon special parade of 100 family characters was held. Many Pokemon fans gathered to take pictures and cheered on the street of Yokohama. At night, many Pikachus attract the audience while performing the live show. The spectators prepared a smartphone to take a remembrance picture. In the night sky, Pokemon characters are visualized by drone mapping. Japan summer is sometimes affected by typhoons with heavy rains. On this day, Pokemon Pikachu's power and the enthusiasm of children defeated Typhoon. It is a memorial event for every audience member. UNESCO has teamed up with local authorities in Basra to renovate old houses known as Shana Shil in the Armenian neighborhood in the old city to preserve its historic identity. The initiative is part of efforts to boost tourism in the city and the country at large as a small but growing number of tourists are heading to Iraq to see attractions spanning from vast desert and marshland ecosystems to ruins of the world's earliest cities and empires. The project aims to renovate a total of 11 Shanashil houses in the area known for its Christian Armenian heritage. There was an estimated number of nearly 25,000 Armenians in Iraq up until the US invasion of the country in 2003, mostly residing in Baghdad, Basra, Kirkuk and Mosul before they started to leave to Europe and other parts of the world. Thousands of Israelis marched through the ultra-Orthodox neighborhood in Nebrak this week to demand women's rights in the wake of the government's highly contested judicial overhaul which has plunged Israel into one of its worst political crises and sparked unprecedented protests at home and deep concern abroad. The government's plan has sown divisions among the Israeli public and even within the military, long viewed as an apolitical melting pot of a fractious society 
with concerns about war readiness voiced on both sides of the debate. Supporters of the legislation argue that it reinstates balance to government branches, while critics say that it removes checks and balances on government powers. Israel's Supreme Court began hearing this week, the first in a series of appeals linked to a judicial overhaul undertaken by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his hard-right coalition which has set off an unprecedented domestic crisis. Srinagar, the summer capital of Jammu and Kashmir is often known for its mountainous beauty. But today, in our episode of South Asia Focus, we'll take you to the floral adventure of the city where you will witness the breathtaking array of 1.5 million flowers. The Indira Gandhi Memorial Tulip Garden is a must visit for the tourists. Have a look. Srinagar, the summer capital of Jammu and Kashmir, the Union Territory in Northern India. The city lies along the banks of the Jhelum River in the Vale of Kashmir. Situated amid clear lakes and lofty forested mountains, Srinagar has a long considerable tourist economy. The Jhelum River runs through the city and is crossed by multiple wooden bridges while numerous neighbouring canals and waterways are lined with shikaras, Kashmir's gondola. To witness the floral side of the summer capital, the Indra Gandhi Memorial Tulip Garden, it is a must visit for the tourists. The garden has also entered the World Book of Records as Asia's largest such park, adorned with a breathtaking array of 1.5 million flowers. We have worked hard today, and the department has got it. So we hope that we will do more work in the department. Hundreds of varieties of tulips bloom in their full glory in the spring season from mid of March to the end of April and attract millions of tourists every year. Located in the foothills of the Zabarwan Hill in Srinagar, Tulip Garden is one of the most surreal tourist spots in India. When we saw that Srinagar is in the Tulip Garden, you are seeing the whole world in the whole world. उसको जान रही है और यहाँ पर्यटन जिस तरह से बढ़ रहा है उसी तरीके से यहाँ के गार्डन और ट्यूलिप गार्डन खास तौर पर पूरी दुनिया के अंदर प्रसिद्ध हो रहे हैं तो क्यों ना एशिया का पहला ट्यूलिप गार्डन का खिताब इसे मिलना चाहिए हमारे मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट्स जो ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंट के अंदर है उनकी अनुशंसा पर आज ये सर्टिफिकेट डिपार्टमेंट के कमिश्नर महोदय को दिया गया है ट्यूलिप गार्डन ऑल्सो नोन एज सिराज बाग इज अ ट्रीट टू दी आईज while the bright colors impress your sight. The mesmerizing fragrance of the blooming flowers refreshes your mind. Kashmir Valley, a paradise on the earth, is adorned with mystical natural beauty. The mountains, meadows and a number of exquisite gardens is certainly a charm for visitors. For the last few years, the tulip garden in the valley has attracted lakhs of tourists from across the world. The number of tourists in the valley is on a steep rise ever since the valley has attained peace and harmony after it got recognition as one of the Union Territories of India. Garden visit is one of the most surreal experiences one can have. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.